Hi, I'm Jay, and today I'm going to present an intro to using Flux with React.js. So first of all, I'll talk about Flux. So Flux is an application architecture, meaning it's not really a full-fledged framework, but rather a pattern for usually using React to structure your application. So the great thing about Flux compared to other things like MVC, Model View Controller, is that it's unidirectional. The whole data flow goes in a single direction, so therefore it is very easily maintainable and um, easy to debug. And it is intended to be used in React.js, but again, since it's only a pattern, it can technically be used with anything else, but it's usually used with React. So, so Facebook came up with, with, with React and Flux at around the same time, and the motivation for this came, arose from what seems like a pretty innocuous thing, but was actually what caused like, outrage against, uh, from like, a lot of Facebook users, which was the dreaded message counter. So what that was is when people got messages and they read them, then the counter should be updated to say that they, they, no, they no longer have any unread messages. But when they went back on, on Facebook, they would still see the one on the messages. So people would get really excited, like, oh, I have a new notification. And then they click it just to see that the number disappears and they don't have anything new. So, <laughs> so that triggered a lot, of, a lot of angry users to contact Facebook and say, just fix chat, fix chat. And some were, again, like a lot more like a hostile than that. So, <laughs> so Facebook saw this and was like, well, what's going on with this? Why is it not updating correctly? And then after some digging through, they realized that the root of the whole problem was had to, had to do with the fact that they were structuring their entire application as using an MVC framework. And the reason MVC is not a great thing to use for such a large scale app like Facebook is that, um, sorry, skipping ahead a little bit. If you, if you use MVC with a pretty small application, then you have your controller that um, updates your model, which then notifies, no, notifies the view. So if you, have, if you don't have a lot of models and views interacting with each other, then this isn't that complicated. But once you start adding lots of models and views, then you start having this like, tangled web of connections in between each other where models will update views, but then things will happen to views which will cause the models to update, and then there are these errors that go back and forth and it just gets really complicated. And it rapidly becomes difficult to trace dependencies. So um, the way Facebook decided to, to handle this problem was, well, first they just, um, they, they kept updating and releasing lots of updates thinking that they fixed the problem only to realize that with the new additions they added to the site, it would just keep breaking for like, other unknown reasons. So after a while of like, constant updating and not really solving the problem, they realized, oh, it must be something like, in, like, inherently wrong with the way we structured this. So that's how they came up with Flux. So one of the reasons that NBC wasn't good for this model was because the, um, the data was being controlled externally. So they decided to go to I'll go to internal control. So what that basically means is that something that has data, like the, the, only, the only thing that is able to change the data of something is itself. So what that means is that, so basically um, use explicit data on the client side instead of derived derive data. So the thing that's being shown on the message counter is the view count. But there's nothing that's really um, counting the number itself, but rather it's taking, I guess, the length of, for example, like an array of unread messages. So they decided to use Flux and keep track of the number of unseen threads instead. And so what they did was they, they made a clear separation of concerns. They had a single store, which I'll get into later, that handles all of the data changing. And whenever they receive, whenever, whenever they receive um, a notification that an action has occurred, then the store handles all of the, the data changing and then notifies the view to update itself. So I'll get into that um, in a bit. So Flux, in, um, in contrast to MVC, is, like I said before, unidirectional data flow, where we have an action, a dispa dispatcher, a store, and a view. So an action, so there's going to be a lot of code coming through, so just bear with me for a while. So an action invokes a method on the disp dispatcher. So an action defines methods, but it doesn't actually know, no, so, sorry. An action describes a lot of methods, but it doesn't actually know what they do. They tell the dispatcher to register methods, and then the dispatcher will actually tell the store that these actions have been invoked. And then the store itself is what handles the actual logic that controls this, the data. And then when the store decides what to do with the data, it notifies the view to update like, the, 
the, the, um, the aesthetics. So um, when, the view, uh, when the view receives a change in the data, the view can also invoke calls on the actions to, to make this whole thing go full circle. So here's, um, here's, here's some snippets of code. I won't get into all of it, obviously. So in the action here, so here, here is where the actions are defined. Not exactly defined, but just like where they are described. So we have these two items only, th these two actions called add item and remove item. So that's pretty straightforward. So all these do is they tell the dispatcher that there are, that there are certain actions called add and remove, but they don't provide any, um, they, they, they don't provide any information of like what it's actually doing. All it's doing is defining an action type called add item and providing a data, a data property for the argument that it would take, like the item that it's going to add or remove. Oh, and also, um, Flux is usually using conjunction with Browserify, so you can do things like requiring that you can usually only do in the back end, but this requires you, this enables you to require things like on the front end as well, instead of having to manually script source everything. So here is just the constants that are being added, so a prop key add item is equal to string add item. So the, what the dispatcher does is literally it just, it takes an action, like, and then just sends it somewhere. So right now, this isn't really doing much. So the actual store is where the things really happen. So the store, which in this case would be a list of, of um, chats, is an array in the store. And then we have these uh, methods add item and remove, remove item, which are basically private to the store. So only the store itself has the ability to update these. But when some, when, when a, um, when a request, if you will, comes from the action slash dispatcher, those basically tell the store to do these things and then the store will actually invoke the actions. So how that happens is that the store will actually register on, on the app dispatcher a list of actions. So the, the store will be like, so I'm going, to, I'm going to listen for you, the dispatcher, to tell me what to do. And then for these actions, like, I, I want you to tell me to do these things by giving me these actions. So in here, um, if you tell me to add item, then I will add an item. And if you tell me to remove an item, then I'll remove an item. But so this is how, um, because of this, you can get away with having a single dispatcher file, but as long as you have multiple stores for multiple parts of your app, such as chats in here and I guess like friends list or something else, for example, you can have multiple stores register different actions on a single dispatcher to make the entire thing really clean. And then the thing this is actually returning in module exports is the to-do store. So this is really cool because the to-do store, the thing that this object design is doing is it's essentially making the to-do store take all the events on eventemitter.prototype. So the to-do, the, this entire store is a big event that can um, listen for changes and also add change listeners. So this store is going to be what notifies the view to update itself. So here, we can, um, there are a lot of methods that I'm not going to go into, but the important things here are render, so the really cool thing about this is that this is a JavaScript file, but here you see it's returning an HTML element. So like, how can you do this? This is against the rules, right? But this is actually using a thing called JSX, where it's supposed to be JavaScript, but it's not really JavaScript, and you, this has to go through a, a special compiler that will render these as HTML, but it's going to turn them into a form that JavaScript can actually understand. So I'll get into that later. So this is a good time to kind of segue into React. So React is, what have, um, React is what Flux uses for the entire model layer. So React is like the V and MVC, but better. So it's like a really nice view layer that is very lightweight and allows for high performance up-to-date views. But it's not intended to be a full, full framework, it's just for the view. So what makes React so cool? So, okay, I'll, I'll skip the virtual down part, but the JSX is really cool. So it allows for direct embedding of HTML to JavaScript syntax. And JSX uses things called components, which are very similar to Angular directives. So this is Hello World written in JSX, where you define a component called Hello World, and the render is this, this thing. And then if you have this react.render, then as long as you have a div with an ID of app somewhere in the, in the application, then it's going to render into this HTML over, that HTML over here. And then this is in JSX, but when this gets transpiled to JavaScript, it actually turns into this form. So it's actually completely possible to just write it like this in the first place. But you can see how if you have lots of like nested, nested HTML elements, it'll get super complicated to nest lots of react.create elements. So they encourage you to use JSX to write everything. And it's just a lot easier and like nicer to look at.
So um, I have a little demo where you can do something very similar to Angular, but using React. <laughs> so, um, all right. So here, can you see this? It's kind of small, but so this is a very similar thing you can do with ng model in Angular, where you have an input you can put, you can put stuff into, and then this will update the, the text on top. So it starts off as cool kid 1507, but if you type into this input box, then you can put you can um, make it update in real time. So if I put in Joe Elvis, then it'll say sub Joe Elvis. So the way this works in the code is that it has this render thing where I, ha I return the entire HTML, but the way it works is that inside this input, this value is kind of similar to Angular, um, Angular 2A binding. So these components have states, and um, this get initial state defines that originally the state is going to be uh, equal to cool kid 1507. But the really cool thing about React is that you can put this thing called on change on the com component, where on change, as in like when something changes in the input, it's going to invoke this method called handle change. So ha the, the method handle change by default takes the event that triggered it as a parameter, and then it's going to set the state, which is initialized to cool kid 1507, to the value that you put inside that input. So in here, when I type something in the input, in which case, in my case was Joe, it's going to take that and handle change on change and change the value of my state to whatever I put in. And then that, that entire thing gets rendered in real time on that component, which is in that div ID app over there. So I'm out of time. I think I got through most of the things I want to say. So um, for further reading, we have these. So Facebook Flux, Flux Talk, you can Google it really easily by just looking up Facebook Flux and a bunch of other things. <laughs>